Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Konica FS1. It was made from 1979 to 1982. It was Konica's first electronically controlled uh, SLR. The circuitry wasn't terribly robust, so instead of being this great technological achievement, it kind of hurt their reputation for reliability. There were three different production runs, uh, with the camera getting more reliable after each one. This one is from near the end of the second production run, uh, and it works perfectly. There's a pretty detailed page on the F1 at conicafiles.com. I'll put a link down in the description below. To run the uh, motors, CPU, meter, the aperture mechanism uh, uses four AA batteries. They're inside this grip and the latches on the back. They're a little fiddly, but that way it's not going to come off by accident. You just taught, uh, put the little tab in the slot there and then click it on and it works there. It's best if you click it over to where the green is showing there. It's a motorized advance and if you hold the button, it does one and a half frames per second. The auto load is actually pretty darn easy to use. Um, it has this uh, claw here to open the back. This doesn't lift up, so there's a cutout here to get your film in. You just make sure you're hooking on the prongs. And then really all you have to do is bring it over far enough for the top sprocket holes to also be on the sprocket and then keep it reasonably flat, close it, and now it's at frame one. It's that simple to load. That's pretty sweet. Odd thing is that rewind is still manual. You push in the button to release the take-up spool and then rewind it just like any old uh, mechanical camera. You set the film speed with this dial underneath the shutter speed uh, dial. It goes from ISO 25 to 3200. And exposure compensation is also done by changing the film speed. So it doesn't have a lift or anything. It's got this knurled knob, kind of like on the front of some of the 70s point and shoot. You turn it on with this switch here. The red showing, um, it's off. So when the white ball is showing, then your camera's ready to go. This is shutter priority if you have the lens, a compatible lens, at the AE mark, or any aperture off of the AE mark, and there's a little lock here so you don't do it accidentally. So you push that little button in, and then you can change the aperture, and then you're in metered manual. The LEDs along the left side of the viewfinder show the camera's auto exposure f-stop selected, or if you're in manual, there's a little M, and it shows your selected f-stop. It'll show you where it wants your exposure to be. In manual, the M flickers, and then the uh, the LED for f1.4 is on solid and that shows your proper exposure. Um, there's a little LED above f1.4 and before the M and that flickers if you're underexposed and if the LED for f22 flickers you're overexposed. Um, when you're in auto exposure mode, click it back over to AE, um, the aperture is almost stepless. It will select to within a tenth of a, a tenth of an f-stop of what the camera has metered. The focus screen is pretty sweet. It's got a uh, horizontal split prism, and then it's got the micro prism around that, and then the matte field. And it's really it's pretty bright and it's really easy to use. The shutter is a uh, vertically traveling metal shutter goes from two seconds to one one thousandth of a second plus bulb. There's an electronic cable switch. Anyway, it's under here. 
um, instead of a normal cable release. Um, they made a bunch of accessories for it, and I have not reverse engineered this one yet um, to see what pin does what. But they did cables, remotes, wireless remotes, an inner valorometer. So it was kind of cool. I always miss having a mechanical uh, cable release. There's a 10 second self timer. It's here on the front and it's running now. And the LED, you just push on the front of it and it is also the switch. It runs for about 10 seconds. It does have a hot shoe. Um, it's got a couple of dedicated uh, contacts. Uh, for Konica flashes made the same era as this. They were the X24 and X36. I don't have either one of those. They're fairly limited in their automatic mode. Depending on your distance, you set them for either F5.6 or F11, and then they automatically will switch the body to a one, one hundredth of a second uh, for flash sync, and they change the lens aperture to the corresponding F5.6 or F11 automatically. And the viewfinder, to know if they're charged, it depends on how the flash is set. Either the F5.6 LED or the F11 LED will flash to let you know that the, that the flash has fully charged and it's ready to go. Uh, it's simple, which was the point, but it's really limited. And for other flashes, it does have a normal center contact, but then uh, it's in yellow. You set your shutter speed to a 60th of a second to sync with uh, non conica flashes. And under this other cover here, it does still have a PC sync uh, socket. So, you know, any other flash, off-camera flash, you're good to go. So that's kind of cool that they left that on a camera that was mostly electronic. This lens was the main reason I bought this thing. You know, you see a picture of something at an auction and no idea if it works, but this looked to be in good shape. Uh, it's the much heralded uh, Hexanon AR 40 millimeter f1.8. Six elements in five groups with a close focus of a hair under a half a meter. I like 40 millimeter. It's actually closer to the diagonal measurement of a frame of 35 millimeter film than a 50, which is considered a normal lens. The results I got on my test roll with this on some Kodak Tri-X, they came out pretty sweet. So I really like the lens. I'm fond of the body, but I don't know how much I will shoot with the body again. So I'll get on to the next camera and I will see you then.